Hi everyone, it's Danny. Welcome back to my channel and another design team layout for the Confessions of a Paper Addict Cut File Shop. Today I'm featuring this super cute pirate map, treasure map cut file that I will leave a link to in the description box. Um, I've been waiting for so long to use this cut file. As soon as Virginia released it, I thought it was super adorable. I just didn't have the right photos. So I am going to use the main cut file and you can see it comes with that kind of uh, trail with the X marks the spot at the end. I'm not going to use that, but I am going to um, put my own spin on it. So I'll show you what I do in a minute. I've also kept the inside part of the cut file um, that is left over on the cutting mat and that will be very handy later. So I suggest if you're going to use this cut file to keep that piece. So I'm going ahead and backing my cut file. I have backed all the little bits and pieces that are part of the treasure map already off camera. Using some journal cards, I'm going ahead here and backing the, the rose, the compass um, design part here. <laughs> and I'm just using tacky glue, as you can see, to glue those all down. And then I am going to come in and back the main map part of the cut file. Now I have, I have here a collection of papers that I've kind of made somewhat of a page kit out of and I pulled this out because I knew I had this craft piece that I wanted to use but then I found the script page and I was so excited to find that because I, I'm just like that's perfect it's like a parchment uh, paper effect with script all over it how perfect for this cut file and that was a total accident so I, I yeah I did a little happy dance <laughs> when I found that so I'm going ahead and backing the the sides of the cut file so the part of the map that uh, curls over um, because the back of that would just be plain so I'm just using this plain it's kind of, it, it reads as a craft it's not it's just kind of like a pattern paper with a craft pattern on it um, so I'm just going ahead and I'll really quickly <laughs> um, just glue those down and then trim off the excess. So I will speed through this just in a second. And when I, uh, I've got a plan for these slide bits, um, if that makes sense. <laughs> You'll see in a minute what I do with those. So I'm going to go ahead and glue now my script paper on the background. I am just going to add glue around the uh, top and the bottom edge. I don't want to glue the script paper to the sides of the map because I'm going to come in with some dimension for those. I have a plan for those. <laughs> so I have just added glue all the way to the back and I'm just going to pop my paper straight on the top. So I find this the easiest way to glue a large cut file with a big uh, empty center piece because they do tend to flop around a bit. So I find the easiest way is just to flip them over and then add glue and then just lay my paper over the top. So that stops the edges of the cut file moving around too much and um, guarantees it's not going to go wonky. So once that is glued on, I am going in with my scissors and just trimming off all the excess. And there you go, you can see that's all done. Now I am going to do my little uh, trail. So what I decided to do for this was uh, some hand stitching. It's just, uh, it's begging for it. And I wanted to do that in a bright red. <laughs> so it really shows that kind of stitched um, trail effect. So I'm going in with my, I've got an Amy Tan uh, paper piercing mat on top of a self-healing craft mat there. So that just um, prevents me from sticking holes in my desk. And I'm also going in with the sewing hole all and just piercing all the holes. I have threaded my needle with all six strands of embroidery floss just in a bright red color. I'm not sure what color it was. I have it left over from a, a different project, actually a cross stitching project. And for the X marks the spot. I am going to do a back stitch. So I am just um, doing a simple back stitch. I'm not going to zoom in on this or anything. Um, not, you guys have seen me do this often enough. It's really, really simple. Um, and you could definitely search on YouTube for um, embroidery tutorials that will probably show you a lot better than I ever could <laughs> if you're not sure what um, what I mean by back stitch. But I'm just doing the, the X all in back stitch and then I will come in in a second and do the trail in a simple running stitch. So it's not even a back stitch, it's even simpler. So it's just in and out, in and out, in order. So there you go, you can see I've stitched my little X and it's literally up one hole, down the next, up the next, down the next. Really, really simple. I just wanted that kind of effect of, um, yeah, a path or a, uh, a route traveled. So I think this is really cool. I did actually, you'll see in a minute when I come 
close up. I did put much smaller stitches and a lot closer together in those loops because um, when I did the big long stitches, you just couldn't really see that it was a loop. It just looked messy. So that's a tip for you as well. Here is where I'm coming in and gluing all my little bits and pieces of the cuffal down. And that is where that uh, big negative space uh, is coming into its own as a template. So you just have to watch that you don't use too much glue because if it seeps out from underneath those little pieces, it can glue um, that big extra piece to your cut file, which is what you don't want, obviously. So um, as you can see, I'm just sort of lifting it up in between adding bits so that I'm making sure it doesn't glue itself to, um, to my cut file. So here I'm going to add some dimension to those curled over sections of the map. I'm just cutting off some single-sided adhesive foam and I am just going to tuck that underneath those uh, flaps. Sorry, I get my big fat head in the way there, but you can see here that I'm just sliding it underneath. And there you go, you can see it's all shadowy and dimensional and looks 3D and super cool. I just love this cut file, it's so much fun. Seriously, if you can find a layout to put this cut file on, just go for it, it's so much fun to use. This is the photo I'm going to use, it's my little man at Talk Like a Pirate Day at school. So he's dressed up as a pirate, uh, very much a homemade last minute costume. <laughs> um, I did my best, he looked pretty cute. I put a little um, liquid eyeliner moustache on him, which is just the cutest freaking thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, but there you go, he's um, he's all dressed up as a pirate, so perfect cut file for this layout. And um, as, as I was taking the photos, I had this, this cut file in mind, because like I said, I've been trying desperately to use it. Okay, so here we go. I'm adding some black acrylic paint to these stickers. They're kind of like a, they're really pretty. They're like a sage green with a uh, busy floral pattern. I, it, they're really difficult to use. The pattern's really busy. They're kind of big and bold. I really like the font though, and I've done this quite a bit with these stickers. Um, yeah, I think I've mostly painted them. So you can just, I've used a makeup sponge, dabbed some black acrylic paint over the top, let it dry, and there you go, black stickers instantly. Super easy to do. I'm adding another photo mat to my photo, just that, that navy blue anchors. You can't even really see its anchors once I've put it on the photo, but that's fine. I'm adding this border strip too. This is off a Kaiser Craft sticker sheet. Um, I don't typically use those as border sheets, but I just really like that it's footprints in the sand and it kind of helps to um, anchor my layout, just gives it kind of a, a little base to sit on. I thought that was cool. All right, I am going to add my subtitle here with these little tile uh, stickers and they're just in that nice bright red that he has in his bandana and in that stitching as well. So I'm just trying to bring that in in a few places. Uh, my whole title is obviously going to be Ahoy Me Howdies. <laughs> I'm going to pop my date in with my date stamp and after I add my ink, I realize that I, it was on, I think like the 19th of September or something, but I'd actually put the 91st of September. So luckily I realized, um, and again, sorry, my big head in the way, but I'm just using that with some black ink and uh, it's stamped. It fits in just really nicely in that little space in my subtitle. So now I'm going to come in and embellish. Um, did anyone spot those little baby hands there? <laughs> Trying to grab my, uh, she loves my paper trimmer and my guillotine, like the two things that are super sharp, drives me crazy. Anyway, I am coming in with some, I think these die cuts are, they are definitely from Rosie Studio. I think the collection is called Clear Water or Still Water. I believe it's still on their website if you want to go check that out. But I'm just going to try and add some nautical themed bits and pieces. I have a couple of chipboard bits and pieces here um, that I can't even tell you what the, collection is from that little ocean tab there and that yellow circle piece are uh, those chipboard pieces I so old no idea where they came from this little set is puffies from Coco Vanilla Hello Sunshine love them this little anchor is put in probably every conceivable location on this page before I settle on a spot um, I do uh, do that off camera because it was just driving me crazy but I do get it on there and that little seahorse. I'm playing with another Rosie Studio collection here. I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of like fairies and stuff, but they do have the odd nautical bit, like that gold foil anchor. It's strange, but anyway, <laughs> um, I love that gold foil anchor, so I do bring that in. And this gold foil seashell as well to tie in some more of that gold. And now I'm just going to add some ink to the edges of some of these pieces. They were just um, too similar to the background color and they're fading away. So I'm just using a felt tip pen to do that. I find it easier to use this than an ink pad because you can get into all those little um, tight corners and crevices. And then I will start to glue all my bits and pieces down. So you'll see that my little puffy anchor ended up on the right hand side next to my lighthouse. Finally, I've also added in a little puffy arrow at the top there and a starfish. And that starfish has some gold foil on it too. So it's another spot for that. 
tucking all that in. Little seahorse is really sweet. And then I have these puffies. Most of these are too cartoony for this layout, but um, some of the shells and the starfish and one of the little fish I do get on the layout here. That little starfish brings in a nice little pop of red again. Then the very last thing I will do is just snip off that tiny sliver of map that is hanging off the edge. And that is my layout finished. Thank you so much for joining me today. Close-ups are coming up. Don't forget to check out the shop. The link is in the description box below. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thank you.